Coming out, it's a great day, beautiful day. I mean, 70 degrees, January 26th. Can't beat that. So, uh, you know, it, it, we've been uh, we've been together since the semester started. It's a couple of weeks now, but excited about this team. Um, really, because of the, the the players within the team, uh, watching them grow and, and improve and come out in the fall on a mission, and uh, that just that hunger and that drive and um, just it just hasn't stopped. And just watch it, watching a, a group of guys that have just been very, very uh, persistent and intent on getting better and on on earning our way as we go through this start of this preseason into the season and just continuing to get better. It's just what we see as a coaching staff. We see guys that are just are just very driven right now. And uh, so expect to have a great training session today. Another great one tomorrow. Another great one the next day. And just keep on this path of of steady growth and improvement and so we can earn the opportunity to get hot at the end and be one of those teams that is competing to be the last team standing so um we have no excuses we uh we feel like we've got got enough pieces and uh really excited to see how these pieces come together over the next few weeks leading up to the start of the season and then seeing how these how it all evolves and how the roster uh continues to 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 take shape uh, as we figure out, you know, who goes where and establish roles as the season continues. We're, we've never been, uh, at least personally, never been a, a believer in the opening day lineup is going to match the end of the end of the year lineup. There's, I've actually never even seen that. Uh, always seen, you know, a fluid situation because things happen and guys improve and guys get opportunities. So really, really excited to watch how this evolves and watch us go and and grow and. And, uh, and get knocked down and get back up and, you know, really show what the identity of Clemson baseball team 127 is uh, throughout the course of this entire season. What impact do you think uh, Will Taylor punting football, so to speak, and devoting himself full-time to baseball will have on his game? Well, I, I, I think it's, it's all going to be positive. You know, every time I've talked about Will Taylor, I've talked about this is the first time in his life that he has – specialized in baseball you know and if if we had a couple more hours right now we talk about how bad of an idea it is for young kids to sport specialize you know at a young age and will taylor is who he is the explosive athlete that he is because he was an athlete first and he sport sampled and he played football and baseball and wrestled and other sports and it has uh, helped him become this dynamic player uh, and now that he is uh, he is exclusively focusing on on baseball um, just seen you know just another another level of his progression um, because he has the time to devote to it so excited for him really appreciate his family their willingness to give up a full scholarship in football uh, to have no scholarship in baseball and they talked about um, the gratitude that they have for Clemson University for Coach Sweeney, the football staff, the people here who have enriched his life, uh, and they were willing to to make that sacrifice financially for what you know is an investment into his future. And, uh, because I think everybody recognizes that baseball he's got a he's got a very bright future in baseball. So uh, really appreciate you know the Will Taylor uh, the Taylor family uh, and and what Willie Taylor means to our program and the leadership that he exudes when he's out here. What are the key attributes that you see in him as a baseball player? Well, he's got all five tools. You know, people, scouts, this grading system of five tools, hit, hit for power, run, field, throw. He can do it all. Uh, there's nothing that, that he lacks. He's, he's you know, uh, good in everything. And uh, guys who are usually good in, in everything are, end up being great players. And so he's just uh, very consistent. I was extremely impressed last year for a guy who's never sport uh, specialized or specialized in baseball and didn't have half the year's worth of repetitions to come out and have the plate decisions discipline that he had. Uh, plate decisions is one of the things that we value. You know, the ability to swing at strikes and take balls and make good decisions at the plate. And for a guy who missed the entire fall in terms of seeing live pitches to come out and almost be 
uh, in, a, in an in-season form of uh, making really good decisions at the plate, I think is a big part of his game and allows him to play at the top of his ability level consistently. Who are some of the names you see buying for spots in the starting rotation? Who? Well, everyone that started in the past. Um, so guys that were in the weekend rotation last year at one point or another, Austin Gordon, Tristan Smith, Ethan Darden, Joe Allen, Billy Barlow, Rocco Reed, um, you know, I mean, that's, we feel like we've got some good options there. The transfer, Matt Marshall um, started a lot in his career. Oh, it feels like I'm missing somebody as well. Um, but yeah, we feel really good about the, uh, the depth uh, of the pitching staff on the starting end and feel just as good about the depth of the bullpen as well, working from back to front. Tristan Smith specifically, how have you seen him grow uh, from the end of year two? Good, really good. He's uh, he went out and the, well, he had got great experience for us, simply because he pitched in a multitude of roles. He's a starter, he's a closer, he's a high leverage reliever. Uh, so having that, that's that's you know that's tough because we very few college programs, you know, especially at our level, you don't really recruit relievers out of high school. You're always recruiting starting pitching, and so as a high school kid to come in and learn how to be a reliever and then learn how to be a high leverage reliever where hey we need you you know in five minutes to be ready to go when normally it takes 50 minutes as a starter to get so it's it's a it's a process that you know it's tough for freshmen that have never done it before to learn how to do that but then to excel in the in those roles and get the experience in those roles and then for him the next step was going out in the summer and pitch very well in the Cape Cod League was the second half all-star and pitched really, really well. And I think that's just a any any kid that does that. Um, and we had a few all-stars from the summer and in position players as well. But the confidence boost you get from that is is huge. And um, and so he's brought a lot of confidence and a lot of uh, another year of experience, another birthday. So he is uh, he is poised to to make the jump, and we have every expectation that he'll be, you know the front of the rotation type guy. And then piggybacking off of that, um, obviously a lot of people from the pitching rotation coming back. Uh, you took two Whopper transfers. How are they going to fit into the uh, program in the grand scheme of things? Yeah, uh, they're going to fit in great. Um, they're both very talented. Matthew Marshall has the most starting experience of anyone on our team. Um, and he could have gone to any team in the country and that would have most likely been the case. Uh, it just brings a wealth of experience so many innings pitched i couldn't quote you on how many but it's a lot right and he's done it very well he's got a he's got credentials he's got a resume of division one success uh, he's a strike throwing machine uh, three pitches for strikes just one of those guys that you know the stuff isn't necessarily going to blow you away but it's the pinpoint command that makes him very effective and a lot of young kids they they go down the path of trying to develop their stuff and just you know, de-emphasize command, but at our level, you've got to be able to throw strikes with a pitching coach like Jimmy Bellinger, who who is almost maniacal about 64% strikes in everything you do in the bullpen and everything, scrimmages, games. Like we just put such a high emphasis on strikes and giving our defense a chance and going out and competing with a toughness and body language. So I think for for guys like that who come in with that proclivity to, to command the ball and control the zone. You know, Matt Marshall fits right in. Lucas Malstad, every coach, you know, every every team I've ever been on in college baseball, I, if you don't have an unconventional guy, you wish you did. And Lucas Malstad brings that, you know, that Laredo sidearm, you know, down under, submarine, slot change. I mean, it's just, it's hard to hit. You know, you don't train it. You know, and you don't have BP throwers throwing it. You don't see it very often. And so he's got the combination of command plus stuff. Um, plus durability, he's unique from the sense that he makes a lot of appearances at Wofford. He did this, he made a lot of appearances, but he made a lot of appearances with multiple innings. So he's a, he's a workhorse as well. So I'm excited for him. Uh, you know, Matt Marshall's slotted more for potential starter. Lucas slotted more for, you know, 
closer high end or high leverage reliever along with Nick Clayton and, and Rob Hughes on the back end. But feel really good about our options and excited about the pitching staff. You mentioned Lucas as a potential closer. I mean, there are, are there other guys who are in the competition with him right now, or is he a head in that place? No, and it, that's the beautiful thing is nobody has been anointed. I'd say the only one that's, you know, I could tell you today, I tell you today, Blake Wright's going to start in the infield. Um, outside of that, we've got, you know, probably a, a two deep rotation. Um, and I, Cam Canabella, Will Taylor, like there's a few guys. Um, but, you know, add a few. Um, but, yeah, there's no, no roles have been, like, etched in stone um, outside of, I'd say those those three guys from a position player standpoint. You know, we feel really good about Austin Gordon and Tristan Smith and feel really good about some other options starting, feel really good about Nick Clayton, Rob Hughes, and Lucas Marshall at the back end because they've all pitched in high leverage situations uh, at the back end before. But, you know, saying this guy's our closer, I don't, I don't know, or, you know, I don't know if we'll do that. We may say these guys are our closers. You know, and, and depending on the game, we, you know, we may be able to go to those guys earlier. Um, you know, it may be a close game, and we may use all three of them. Uh, not have to need the starter to go six or seven innings. So I, I think these are all things we're going to figure out. It's, these are all good problems to have. Uh, but there's definitely going to be a, a figuring it out phase for us as coaches as we figure out what the best nine guys are and what the best uh, grouping of pitchers are out there to, for a weekend rotation and in the back end and the middle. I guess in the 